Long before the dinosaurs, Earth belonged to other rulers. A forgotten age where creatures neither fully reptile nor mammal walked the land. They were strange, powerful, and in their time, unstoppable. This was the Permian period, a chapter of life that lasted 50 million years, yet ended in the greatest extinction our planet has ever seen. Let us step back in time to 299 million years ago. The Earth was changing in ways it never had before. Almost all of the planet's land was merging into one colossal mass, the supercontinent known as Pangaea. It stretched across much of the globe, from icy poles to burning equator. At its heart, far from the moisture of the seas, lay vast deserts. Endless, hostile and dry, they were lands of brutal extremes. Summers could sear the land with blistering heat, while winters froze it under bitter cold. Rain was scarce and life was forced to adapt or perish. Yet along the coasts and rivers, pockets of green clung to survival. Towering conifers, sprawling seed ferns, and giant horsetails formed scattered forests, isolated sanctuaries in a world increasingly dominated by dryness. In these scattered oases, amphibians still lingered. They were the ancient rulers of a much earlier world, some growing to the size of crocodiles. But they remained prisoners of water. Without swamps and ponds, their eggs and soft skins left them vulnerable. As the land grew drier, their time in power began to slip away. The air, meanwhile, belonged to the insects. This was an age when oxygen levels ran high, and with it came giants. Dragonflies with wingspans half a meter long darted through the sky. Millipedes stretched to lengths no human alive today could hold in their arms. The hum of wings and the rustle of armored bodies filled the atmosphere of this ancient earth. But the true revolution of the Permian was something far less obvious, an innovation so small yet so powerful that it would change the course of life forever. It was the amniotic egg. Unlike the fragile eggs of amphibians, these new eggs had protective shells and inner membranes, allowing them to survive away from water. For the first time in history, animals could roam freely across dry land, no longer tied to lakes or rivers to reproduce. From this innovation came two great lineages. One would lead to the reptiles, who in time would give rise to dinosaurs, crocodiles and birds. The other would lead to the mammals. And in the Permian, it was this second lineage, the Synapsids, that rose to power. They looked reptilian to our eyes, but hidden within them was the spark of our own future. This was the stage set for the Permian, a world of vast deserts and isolated forests of giant insects and fading amphibians, of innovation and survival. And it was here, in this unforgiving land, that the first great dynasty of land animals would emerge, the forgotten rulers of an age long before the dinosaurs. In this harsh and shifting world, new rulers emerged. They were not dinosaurs. Those would not appear for another 50 million years. These were the synapsids, creatures that looked reptilian, but carried within them the first hints of the mammals to come. For nearly the entire Permian, they would dominate Earth's land. One of the most iconic was Dimetrodon. At first glance, it might look like a dinosaur, a stocky body, a mouth full of sharp, serrated teeth, and that towering sail rising from its back. But Dimetrodon was no dinosaur at all. It lived almost a hundred million years before the first dinosaurs ever appeared. In truth, it was one of our distant relatives, Dimetrodon grew over three meters long and stalked the floodplains as an apex predator. Its sail, supported by tall spines on its backbone, has puzzled scientists for decades. Perhaps it helped absorb the morning sun, warming the animal's blood when nights were cold. Or perhaps it served as a billboard, a display to attract mates or to intimidate rivals. Whatever its purpose, the sail made Dimetrodon one of the most striking hunters the world has ever seen and for millions of years, it ruled the Permian Plains. But every predator needs prey. And filling that role was Edaphosaurus, a plant-eating cousin of Dimetrodon. Like its fearsome relative, it too carried a sail upon its back, though it was covered with strange crossbars unlike anything seen before. At over three meters long, it grazed on tough Permian vegetation, ferns, horsetails, and seed plants that had evolved to withstand drought. Slow and heavy-bodied, Edaphosaurus relied on size and numbers for protection. 
Together, Dimetrodon and Adaphosaurus formed one of the earliest predator-prey arms races on land, each shaping the other's evolution. As the Permian wore on, new hunters emerged. Among the most fearsome were the Gorgonopsids. They were unlike Dimetrodon, sleek and muscular, built for speed as well as power. Their skulls carried long, saber-like canine teeth that could pierce the hides of even the toughest prey. These were among the first truly efficient land predators, animals with the agility of mammals, but the power of reptiles. In them, we can glimpse the first echoes of the great cats and wolves that would come hundreds of millions of years later. For a time, the Gorgonopsids reigned supreme, unmatched in their ferocity. But the Permian world was not only home to predators. Among the strangest of its plant eaters were the pariasaurs. They were massive, lumbering creatures, some the size of a modern rhinoceros. Their bodies were covered in bony armor, their faces knobbly and grotesque. To our eyes, they look almost alien, squat, heavy and clumsy. Yet in their day, they were among the most successful herbivores, roaming in herds across the plains, chewing through the hardy vegetation of a dry and unforgiving world. And still, the diversity of life did not end there. Smaller synapsids, scurrying insect eaters, burrowers and opportunists filled every ecological niche. The Permian was not a barren land, but a thriving, complex ecosystem. It was a world full of innovation, experiment after experiment, as life tested new forms, new strategies and new possibilities. This was the age before the dinosaurs, a time when synapsids, our distant kin, were the undisputed rulers of Earth. But even as they thrived, forces greater than any animal were stirring. The world itself was beginning to turn against them. For millions of years, the rulers of the Permian thrived. Predators hunted, herbivores grazed, and ecosystems found their balance. But the stability of life on Earth has always been fragile, and in the late Permian, that balance began to collapse. As the supercontinent of Pangaea continued to grow, its vast interior became harsher and drier. Where lush swamps and forests once spread, deserts now advanced. Rivers shrank, wetlands withered away. The great amphibians, still chained to water, dwindled in number. Even the synapsids, masters of the land, began to feel the strain. The climate itself grew unpredictable. Summers blazed with unbearable heat. Winters brought cold that bit deep into the bone. Rainfall became irregular, starving some lands with drought, flooding others with sudden storms. What had once been a patchwork of thriving environments was shifting into something more hostile. And then from deep within the earth came fire. Volcanoes rumbled across the land, releasing gases that thickened the air. Sulfur and carbon poured into the atmosphere, slowly choking the skies. Oxygen levels dropped and the air itself became harder to breathe. Creatures that had once flourished struggled to survive in a thinner, less forgiving atmosphere. Predators vanished first. Apex hunters like Dimetrodon had already disappeared by this time, leaving behind only their fossilized legacy. The mightiest gave way to the adaptable, as new rulers took their place. But each extinction left scars on the ecosystem. Each collapse weakened the chains that tied life together. The Permian had been an age of innovation and dominance, but now it was becoming an age of decline. The Earth was preparing for something unprecedented, a catastrophe that would test life to its very limits. 252 million years ago, the slow unraveling of life on Earth reached its breaking point. What followed was the most devastating mass extinction in the planet's history, an event so destructive it is known simply as the Great Dying. It began in the far north, in the region we now call Siberia. The Earth split open, and for hundreds of thousands of years, unimaginable forces poured from the depths. Vast volcanoes erupted, not in isolated bursts, but in waves so vast they covered millions of square kilometers in molten rock. Entire landscapes vanished beneath rivers of lava. But the true danger was invisible. The eruptions belched out staggering amounts of gases, carbon dioxide, methane, sulfur, enough to poison the atmosphere. At first, the skies darkened with ash. Global temperatures plunged in a brief volcanic winter. Crops of primitive plants withered. Herbivores weakened. Predators followed. Then came the opposite. As the ash cleared,
greenhouse gases trapped heat on a scale Earth had never seen before. The planet lurched into a climate spiral. Temperatures soared, hotter than at any point in the history of complex life. Rain turned acidic, killing forests already under strain. Rivers dried, deserts spread. The oceans too were dying. As the world grew hotter, oxygen in the seas collapsed. Stagnant, suffocating waters spread across the depths, while poisonous hydrogen sulfide rose up from below. Coral reefs disintegrated. Shellfish dissolved in acidic waves. Fish suffocated en masse, their skeletons settling into silent seabeds. On land, the air grew thin. Oxygen levels fell so low that even the strongest animals struggled to breathe. Great herds of pariasaurs starved as plants disappeared. Gorgonopsids, the saber-toothed hunters, found nothing left to chase. Entire food chains broke apart, leaving only death. This catastrophe did not strike in a single day, but across tens of thousands of years, long enough for the Earth itself to transform, yet sudden enough that life could not keep pace. By the end, more than nine out of every ten species had vanished. The forests fell silent, the oceans turned barren, the skies carried little but heat and poison. The rulers of the Permian, the mighty synapsids, the armored giants, the swift predators, all but disappeared. Entire dynasties erased from the story of life. Never before and never since has Earth come so close to losing everything. The Permian period, an age that had lasted 50 million years, ended not in gradual decline, but in near total annihilation. This was not just extinction, it was a reset, a world wiped almost clean with only a handful of survivors clinging on in the ruins. And yet, even in the darkest of times, life endures. The great dying did not end the story of Earth. Against all odds, some creatures survived. Small, adaptable synapsids clung on, hiding in burrows, scavenging whatever food remained. In the oceans, a handful of fish, mollusks, and tiny organisms held their ground, enduring waters poisoned and starved of oxygen. It was from these fragile survivors that the next chapters of life would be written. In the wake of devastation, new opportunities arose. The forests stripped bare regrew in different forms. Ecosystems rebuilt themselves from the ground up, and out of this renewal came new rulers, the archosaurs, the ancestors of crocodiles, flying reptiles, and eventually the dinosaurs. The Permian world was gone, erased by fire, poison, and time. Its great rulers, the Dimetrodon, the Gorgonopsids, the armored pariasaurs, would never walk the earth again. But they were not failures, they were pioneers. They proved that life could thrive on land, that predators and prey could build entire ecosystems far from water, that the earth could be dominated by creatures beyond imagination. And in a way, their legacy lives on in us, for the synapsids that ruled the Permian were not reptiles, but distant relatives of the mammals. Their story did not end in the great dying. It carried forward through tiny survivors across hundreds of millions of years, until one day, it led to us. The Permian period may be overshadowed by the dinosaurs that followed, but it was here, in this forgotten age, that the foundations of our world were built. An age of struggle, an age of dominance. An age wiped away in silence, but never truly lost. The Permian reminds us of two truths, that life is fragile and that life is resilient. Even in the face of total collapse, evolution found a way forward, and from that resilience came the world we know today. The Permian is often overshadowed by the age of dinosaurs, but without it, there may never have been dinosaurs at all, and perhaps no mammals, no us. What do you think? If the great dying had never happened, if creatures like Dimetrodon and the Gorgonopsids had survived, would the world today look anything like the one we know? Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to keep exploring Earth's forgotten past and possible futures, join us here on Lifenix. The story of life is vast, and we've only just begun to tell it.